Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. So I have another special request from um, one of our Facebook followers. They wanted me to demonstrate my creme brulee. I do probably 30 different flavors of creme brulee, but they are all based on this basic recipe. So I'm gonna show you the basics and then I'll tell you how you can switch it up and jazz it up. So this is just a simple vanilla one. So creme brulee literally translates to burnt cream. So much sexier when you say it in French than when you say it in English. Everything's sexier in French, let's be honest, right? Um, not that your food has to be sexy, but why not? Okay, so we're gonna start off with the cream portion of this. This is heavy whipping cream. Make sure you don't use the light whipping cream, otherwise this will not set up properly. To that, we're just gonna be super simple and add a little bit of uh, pure vanilla extract, or if you have them, sometimes they're hard to come by and they're expensive, um, you can actually take a vanilla bean and then scoop out the actual vanilla little seed pods and throw those in there as well. The extract works just fine. And this is gonna go onto a burner on sort of a medium low temperature. And we're just going to get it um, simmering enough so you can start to see bubbles forming around the edges, but not to the point where it starts to scald over the top um, and form that skin because that kind of changes the taste of the cream and it tastes sort of burnt. So I'm gonna set this on the burner here. So you're making burnt cream, but you don't wanna burn the cream. Um, the burning part occurs at the very end with the blow torch. <laughs> Did you learn anything from Julia? She said that the only thing a woman needs is a blow torch or something to that effect. Don't quote me on that. Something like that. I've listened to her. I love my blow torch with a passion. It it's, gives me my fire. Ha! I'm here every day. Literally, I'm here yes, every day. Amazing. During quarantine, my husband's stuck with my corny ass jokes. Okay. So I'm gonna add this on so a medium low temperature, let that go. In the meantime, I have uh, regular granulated sugar. This is the organic one, so you can see it's a little bit brown because it's not totally refined, so it has a tiny bit of the molasses in it. A little bit of either cinnamon, even like three quarters of a teaspoon, not super cinnamony. And then we need egg yolks. So I'm gonna show you how I like to separate my egg yolks. Um, and I save my egg whites for my husband because he likes to make egg white omelets or scrambled whatever but basically you can either tap it like that um, and then separate it and use the shell which is what most people do but this can be dangerous because you can end up piercing the yolk and end up with shell in your creme brulee which we don't want so i'm going to show you the preferred method yolk in here white in here best way to do it is to take your egg and these are really really hard so they're nice and fresh Crack it against the countertop, just like that. See that? Okay, now, if I go ahead and take it and then pop the egg into my hand and just kind of pass it back and forth, the white sort of slips right between my fingers and I can actually kind of pull this, it's called the chalice. I don't, Called the little boogery thing, which is probably the not the chalice. Chalice is the, the technical term. And you can see how nice and perky and firm this egg yolk is. That's a really good quality egg yolk. That's what you're looking for. If it kind of goes, that means it's old and probably not very good. So we have a half a cup of sugar in here, and I'm doing six egg yolks. And then what I had as far as cream was two and two thirds cup cream about a teaspoon or so of vanilla extract and just under a teaspoon of the cinnamon. Just so you know what your measurements are. That way you don't have to look it up later and you can just write it right down. Okay, get that in there. I've got two more. I, sh I should enter a speed separating contest. I'm sure someone has in, uh, invented that somewhere. I've just never been invited. How okay. many eggs can you do in a minute? I could probably do a half a dozen pretty easily. <laughs> I don't know, you'll see, because that's what I just did, and we'll see how long this actually takes on the video recorder without my yapping, right? Okay, so we're gonna take a quick pause so that I can wash my hands, because unlike some of those shows on TV where they never wash their hands, I wash my hands, so I'll be right back. Okay, hands are now washed. Countertop is sanitized with bleach solution as per the health department's requirements slash my germophobic requirements um, and we're just going to take our sugar and our egg yolks and whisk them together just basically to incorporate the two together and you'll start to notice it'll sort of um, become sort of a lighter yellow shade and then let's take a peek at our heavy cream 
come on over here. And it's just about starting to bubble. I'm gonna give it a second longer. Um, I don't see no bubbling. I know, give it a moment. Uh, the whole idea of a watched, a watched pot never boils, a watched cream never simmers. It's the same concept. But if you walk away from it, it will for sure scald and be ruined. That's just the other theory of it. Oh, also, um, if you throw nuts in the oven to toast them, inevitably you will burn them unless you put a timer on. That's just the way life goes. Those are, those are- Is there a timer on the nuts that you made? That's a different recipe. We're doing a whole different oh, wait. day. Magic of television. Magic of television. There's no nuts okay, in that there's oven. There's no nuts in that oven. <laughs> Let's check back over here. Okay. Very, very teensy bubbles just starting to form over the edges here. Nothing is showing on camera. Oh, uh, they're there, I promise. Literally, uh, may, you can also maybe kind of see that, that it's starting to wrinkle a little bit, like over the top. Uh, the wrinkles we see. You see the wrinkles? Okay. Well, they're on the left side of the camera, everybody. Yeah, right around here. Okay, so that's all I want. I don't want to go any further than that because... I don't want to scald the, the cream. Okay, so now sort of the first pitfall of making creme brulee, which otherwise is a fairly simple thing. Um, if I were to pour hot cream straight over our egg yolks in here, then I would have scrambled eggs, which basically would ruin the whole darn thing. Okay, so what I need to do is very slowly incorporate the hot cream into the egg yolk mixture. Tiny, tiny bit whisking constantly. If you have a friend that can do the pouring while you're doing the whisking, that's nice, but I'm gonna do it myself. So you just wanna do a little at a time and then whisk. Making sure that you're tempering your egg yolks. If you've ever heard the term tempering, this is what it refers to. Taking two things that are of unlike temperature and bringing them to, together so that they stay nicely homogenized. That also applies for um, chocolate. If you've ever melted chocolate, you have to temper it properly. So, a little bit more, whisk again. A little bit more, whisk again. Once you've got approximately a third of the cream mixed in there, you can then add the rest of it because at this point you probably won't scramble it. Keep whisking vigorously making sure that all of those edges are scraped and that is your base okay so first of all it smells lovely um this can be uh, jazzed up in a couple different ways so i added vanilla extract you could use almost any kind of extract out there if you wanted to use almond extract mint extract if you want to do like a chocolate mint one i've done before um, you could add chocolate chips to the cream mixture and then you'd have that melt into the cream and add that into the egg yolk and sugar base and then you'd have a totally different flavor. You could use various different flavors of uh, fruit purees. Um, probably Jeff's favorite is mango puree. He likes the mango um, creme brulee. You could use pumpkin, pureed pumpkin, if you wanted a pumpkin flavor one for the holidays. You could also jazz it up with various flavors of liqueur. You could use amaretto, you could use a Godiva liqueur, a coffee liqueur, um, Chambord, which would be raspberry, or you could use um, Grand Marnier, which is orange flavored, which incidentally, chocolate and orange love each other. So if you did that one, I would highly recommend mixing that with the melted chocolate version of this. So as I say, same basic flavors, just jazzed up with a couple Does different variations. Does the amount variations. of cream change when you add those other ingredients? If you do, not so much with the alcohols because you're only gonna do like a tablespoon of the alcohol. If you're gonna do a fruit puree or like a pumpkin puree, you'll wanna reduce the amount of cream by whatever the volume of the um, liquid is that you're gonna use. So if I'm using, say a cup of mango puree, then I'd wanna reduce the cream by a cup or so. Um, basically like that. For this amount that I'm doing, you would really only want to do about a half a cup of mango puree, otherwise it would not hold together properly. Does that answer your question? Okay, so next thing, even if I was perfect, which of course I always am, uh, I want to make sure that I strain this mixture out. I want to make sure there's not an ounce of anything in there that isn't pure in my cream mixture. That could be eggshell, that could be egg yolk that didn't incorporate very well. Anything, that could be the chalice. You don't see very much, but there's maybe one tiny little clump of egg in there. Whatever it is, I don't want it in my creme brulee. 
So once you've strained that out, let me grab my little ramekins. I'll bring them over. I have six one cup ramekins. I prefer using the ramekins that look like this, that are a little deeper instead of the wider, flatter ceramic ones. I'm sure if you've ever had creme brulee in a restaurant, that's the ones you've seen is the wide, flat ones. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that when you do the brulee part and the crunchy part on top, you hardly have any of the creamy custard underneath the crunchy burnt part on top. So you don't really get a juxtaposition of uh, a juxtaposition position of the heat and cold and of the crunch and cream. So I like to have more of the cream underneath. So I do mine in the deeper ramekins. They take longer to bake. Um, the thin ones, they have to come out firmer. They, 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 yeah, they tend to be a little bit more chewy, more like flan texture, which um, I prefer creme brulee to flan. Husband prefers flan to creme brulee. No, I like them both, he likes but they them are both. different. They, they are different. Your creme brulee shouldn't be firm and your flan shouldn't be thin. Correct. So we're going to take this mixture, divvy it up evenly amongst the ramekins. It should be about two thirds of the way up the ramekins. I may have overfilled those first couple. Or maybe not. I might have done it just right. You'd think I've done that before. By George, at least in 15 years of doing this, I think I may have made at least 15,000 creme brulee. <laughs> That's probably an underestimate. Okay, now follow me over here. I'm gonna get some hot water going in the sink. That means I I've done water? how many of these dishes if you've made that many creme brulees? I know, he's done a lot of dishes. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take this very, very carefully and I've got hot water coming up in the sink here. If you don't have really, really hot water from your tap, then you're going to want to boil some water in a tea kettle. Um, the reason that I'm using hot water is that I'm going to fill the baking dish about a third of the way up with hot water, which is basically called a hot water bath. They're not actually bathing. There's no soap involved. I don't know why they call it that. <laughs> but uh, what's going to happen is that that water is going to create steam while these are baking. And by doing so, it'll keep the custards nice and tender so that they don't crack. If you've ever baked a cheesecake that's cracked on you, try baking it in a hot water bath and that will minimize crackage. So let's do that very carefully, making sure you don't get any of the water actually in your creme brulee. That would suck. Okay. And these will go into an oven that's set at 325 degrees for approximately 45 minutes. After about 40 minutes, I will start checking them. And the texture that I'm going for is essentially that of Jello. It should be just set, slightly jiggly, but no longer liquidy. So I'm gonna put them in the oven and then we'll check back on them after 40 minutes so I can show you what I'm looking for. Okie dokie, so I just pulled the creme brulee out of the oven. So I wanna get give you a quick look to see. So they're not liquidy, they're just set, but still a little jiggly. Jiggly? I can't say the word, jiggly. Wiggly, jiggly, whatever. They're like jello. So now these need to cool for an hour. And then at that point, you'll cover them in plastic wrap and put them in the refrigerator. And they need to set up for at least three hours before you can eat them, um, just so that they cool off completely and then have a chance for the cold to really set up the custard. At that point, you can then do the brulee part of it, which we'll show you in a little bit. Um, keep in mind, you can make these up to a week ahead. So if you wanna make a big batch for a dinner party, for example, for following weekend you can make these on sunday and they'll be just fine the following saturday big dinner party i think it, i know it's well, gonna be a while till we have one of those or if you just want to make them for yourself so you have something to eat for the next week and a half that makes quarantine sense. they will last for a week and a half um just cover them and keep them covered in the refrigerator um i'll come back in a bit when i've had these cool completely and then i'll show you how to top them off and we'll bring out the big blowtorch Okie dokie, so our creme brulee has not only set up for three hours, but it's set up overnight. So it's totally ready to go. You can see it's not loose at all. It's almost, well, it's stiff. It's, it's custard. It's the opposite of loose is stiff. Okay, I'm not even going. Uh-huh. Sorry, just, okay. Just so go on. at this point, am I like 15 shades of red right now? Yes, I am. We're gonna take some sugar and sprinkle the top and this has to be regular granulated sugar it can't be super fine sugar it can't be sugar in the raw and it can't be brown sugar just evenly sprinkled over the top and now i don't know about all y'all 
but I don't mess around with little blow torches. I got me a big one at the um, Menards in the auto mechanics department. Those are cheap and they're everywhere, yeah. easy to get. About 20 bucks. Technically that's from Ace. Oh, sorry. Ace Hardware, your local Ace Hardware. Um, make sure if you purchase one of these though, get one that's a higher quality because if you can't go past um, 90 degrees, then it won't work. So um, it has to be a really good quality one in order to do that. So now we'll brulee it. And you just wanna kinda go around this evenly. Perfect. Now, you wanna let it set for a second so that it has a chance for all of that to then harden back up again. I'm gonna grab a little tiny spoon just to show you what it looks like. And I happen to love that smell, that, you know, the burning sugar smell. Um, and then what I want to show you is if you can get close enough to hear it, you can kind of hear the tap. That's what you're looking for is that tap, 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 tap. And then if you go in there, there you go. You've got the juxtaposition of the creamy and the crunchy, which is amaze balls. And it's so simple. It's not super sweet. I don't like super sweet desserts. I like something that will kind of like just sort of top off my meal without being like overwhelming syrupy, which is what this is. And the combination of the crunchy and then the all that creamy underneath is just perfection. Go home and make this. It's super easy. You do not have to wait and spend $30 at a restaurant for creme brulee. You can do this at home. Wait. But wait. Or you come to the Chestnut Street Inn. <laughs> when it's open again. And, and, and spend $30 and have Grand Brulee. No, but that includes the rest of your meal too. Just saying. Anytime, any <laughs> meal, go home and make it. Bye.